All right, so in this video, I'm reviewing the F14B Tomcat by JC Wings, and it is in 172 scale. And I haven't reviewed a JC Wings model yet, so I'm pretty excited to get this one unboxed. It is die cast, and it looks like it's got a pretty good paint job just from the outside. The left flap does open, and on here you can see it has some ordnance. You have the JDAMs, a targeting pod, a Phoenix missile, and some drop tanks. And if you want specs about the F-14, they did include a couple of those as well. The box itself looks pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with that. It's got a little bit of fade to it, but it does look pretty good. On the back, you see the red Ripper's insignia, 1980-2005. And it looks like the cat's on top of a Phoenix missile, AIM-54C. So excited to get this one unboxed. And I'm also going to be showing y'all the Basecraft carrier deck as well. This is a 172 scale diorama by Basecraft. I'll put the link to purchase in the video description below if you want. I did review it a little more in the F-18 video I did of Hobby Master model. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put the link in the video description as well. So excited to get to this one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open it up. And what you need to do first is remove the weapons section here because when it's closed and you try to open up the actual box and slide out the plane, it'll get caught right here. And in order to do that, all you have to do, it has a little piece of tape that I already kind of removed, but you just squeeze it like that and it has these little slots that it slides out of there. Okay, so next to remove the F-14 from the box, we're gonna open up this tab here and we're just gonna slide it out. And it does seem like it was packaged pretty well. It has this plastic piece on top that we're just gonna remove. And this is what it looks like. And I did also purchase the stand. It doesn't come with it, unfortunately. You have to buy it separately, but it does look like it's a pretty good stand, and I do plan on probably leaving it in flight position if it's not gonna be in the carrier deck. So I'm gonna be reviewing that as well. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the ordinance, and it just has this little top cover that you're gonna remove. And be careful when you do, because it wants to pop off and all the parts wanna go everywhere. And then the bottom left, we'll start with these. These are the JDAMs. And these are basically GPS guided bombs. So you could enter coordinates specifically for these. Sometimes they would be laser guided, but I don't see a uh, seeker head on the front. These were originally dumb bombs that they outfitted to be smart bombs. So and dumb bombs basically means they were unguided. They would just drop. But these were GPS guided more than likely. So pretty cool. They come on the hard point and they actually look pretty good. Pretty impressed with that. Next, we'll go ahead and take a look at the targeting pod. So the targeting pod was used to guide the laser guided bombs, which we do have some of those as well. And then on the end here, on this point, we have a sidewinder. I'm not sure what variant, and I also don't see any writing on it. So I couldn't tell you, um, unfortunately, but on the side of the targeting pod, and I think this was the lantern pod. Most F-14s came with the lantern pod until later variants, but it even says danger because of the laser that would come out was really strong. So that's pretty cool. That one looks good there. Next up, we have the Phoenix missile. And this is, the Tomcat is really well known for this one. Um, fortunately, it didn't actually get used a whole lot. I say unfortunately, but also fortunately. Um, but it didn't get used a whole lot. I don't even know if there was that many um, planes that were downed with the Phoenix. But it's the AIM-54Z variant. And it was a huge, I mean, this is a huge missile. It was basically like a rocket. <laughs> I mean, it would go, I think, up to 54 miles, um, 60 miles even sometimes. Certain variants were less, but pretty cool that they included this on there. And then next up, we have, these are the GBUs, uh, laser-guided bombs I was telling you about, that the targeting pod would lock onto a target. These actually would, with a seeker head on the front here, would actually follow the laser and guide it in to the target. So they're very accurate, and they look pretty good. They're already mounted on the hard points. The weathering's actually pretty good. Uh, somewhat dull. I wish it had a little bit more of a sheen, which is funny because I usually like it more dull, but it still looks pretty good. And then lastly, we have the drop tanks. And these have the insignia on them, so they look really good. It says, World Famous Red Rippers. And then it has the insignia there as well. And I do like the patina on this one. It does have a little bit of a gloss, but it still looks weathered. And then here's the other side right here. And you know which side these go on because right here it's labeled right. And then on the other side, it's labeled left. So I do like these. I'm pretty impressed with the weapons. And next up, we'll see what we have here in this packaging. Looks like there's some accessories that I'll get to in a second, including the pilot and the Rio. And then we have the landing gear here. And then we also have a card and some instructions. So here's the card. I'll go ahead and show that to you guys. It feels like a credit card. 
it actually feels pretty good. Uh, Forces of Valor does something like this as well with some of their models, especially their tanks, which I really like. It even has a serial number. This is number 515 out of 600. So really cool for display purposes. I like that they did this. All right, and here we go. We'll go ahead and take out the Tomcat now. It does have some plastic around it to keep it from getting scratched. And I'll just pull it up here from the front. But be careful because it does have antenna on it that can get damaged. And first thing, guys, this feels really, really heavy. Like, I don't think I've had a model in 172 scale diecast that was this heavy, guys. So far, it looks really good. Um, oh, I don't like the sound of that. If I, I don't know if y'all can hear that. Listen. That sounds really cheap, unfortunately, but it does look good. So that's the benefit. I mean, on display, that looks amazing. So here you go. This is kind of a quick little preview before I install anything. And initial impressions are pretty good as far as the looks go. Oh, look at that. Looks like we have some scratches or some paint residue on the canopy. Let me zoom in there. Oh, I don't like that. Well, it is what it is. Unfortunately, it looks like the quality control might not be that good on this. But, I mean, I really like the paint job and all the decals. It looks really good. So, other than that, I gotta see what I can do about that. And it does come with instructions, just a little piece of paper. Really not much to it, just showing you where all the parts go. All right, so here's everything that came in the box. And I also opened up that little package and I'll show you what it came with there. But first, I'll take a look at the Pilot and the Rio. And they're the exact same, so I don't think there's any difference. They look okay. I mean, the helmet looks a little wonky, but it is what it is. Here's the other one here. This one looks maybe a little better, um, but they'll look good, I think, in the cockpit. And one more thing it came with that I almost lost that you need to be careful about if you get this model is this is the pitot tube that goes in the front of the nose cone. And it only came with one that I saw. So if you get this model, be careful. Watch out for this when you open in that package. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and install the drop tanks first. And per the instructions, the drop tanks will go on the fuselage here and here. And again, look on the back of the drop tank and on the plane, it'll tell you which side it'll go. So this one actually goes on the left side. Of course, the insignia will face out, so that's another way to know. And the front hole is actually bigger than the back hole. So you're just gonna kinda push it in and wiggle it. We're gonna see what happens here. Well, that's a really tight fit, which I actually do like because probably won't come out as easy. And then you flip it around the other side. Same thing on these two holes. We'll line these up. See if it's as good of a fit, which it is. So, all right, I like that actually. Some Hobby Master models don't fit as good, but that one did fit really well. And then next up, we'll go ahead and install the Phoenix missile along with the Sidewinder. And it's gonna go in this section right here. And this actually shows that it goes on the right side of the aircraft. So it doesn't say anything on the back, but per the instructions. And you just have this little tab right here that's gonna line up with this slot right by the wheel well there. And you're just gonna wiggle it in. And that, again, that's actually another really good fit. So now we'll go to the other side. And then this is where the lightning pod and the other sidewinder goes right into that slot, similar to the other side. See if that goes in as easy. and it didn't, so it's exactly what I'm talking about. I barely pushed it, but luckily that'll just glue on real quick. Okay, so a little bit of glue and that went on fine, but this is what I'm talking about with plastic going into metal. And right here, I'm having a hard time. I was trying to do it off camera as well, but it is not wanting to go in and stay like the other side. It stays a little bit like that, but it doesn't feel confident. So I'll probably have to go back in in a little bit and put some sticky tack or maybe even a little dab of glue because I do want to leave the targeting pot on there as well. Next up, we're going to go ahead and install the JDAMs and they are labeled as well. So you can see the L there for the left side, which would be right here. And it's these two holes line up with those two posts and you're just going to push it down. And of course, it's kind of tough to get the back end down because the bomb is in the way. So I'm just going to kind of use these tweezers to push it down and it actually goes pretty flat in the back. See how it looks up front. It's a little bit of play, but it looks pretty good. Nothing a little bit of sticky tack can't fix. I need to be endorsed by sticky tack, by the way. I talk about them so much. <laughs> All right, and then this one's gonna go 
on the right side and there it is labeled right as well and that's going to go like this and line up with those two holes again being careful push down in the back and that wants to pop up all right this is the plastic and metal issue that i run into quite a bit with these models is they don't really want to line up very well but we're doing good at first all right and then you got to be careful because you push down on that too hard and it's definitely going to break off so let's see if I can, it's very hard to do one handed by the way guys. See the targeting pod just fell off again so I'm gonna have to adjust that later. So push down and that one is a little better than the other side. Look at that gap there. I'll have to go back and play around with that see if I can get it any better. Okay and lastly for the ordinance we have the GBU laser guided bombs and these aren't labeled on the back they just have a number one on both of them so but they're gonna go right here in the rear of the fuselage and they're just going to slot into those little holes right there. Okay, that's another pretty tight fit. Maybe we'll try the other one, see if it fits any better. And this is the thing that you have to worry about because if you push too hard, and this has happened on plenty of models of mine, the tabs and posts will actually break. So I'm going to work on that one a little better. That one does not seem to want to go down. Let's see if this one's any better. Yep, see it just slid right off. No, that one's not really wanting to go in. So I'm going to mess with those holes, maybe open them up a little bit and get back. All right, so I cannot seem to get this one in, guys. I think this post on the back is too big. So I'm going to try to trim off some of this top part and see if I can't get this one to fit. All right, so that did seem to do the trick, guys. Unfortunately, the quality control is not that great on this ordinance here because even this one still won't lay all the way flat or this one, and then I have issues with a targeting pod. The only thing that really went in well were the drop tanks, but here's how it looks. And while we're here, I'll go ahead and show you the arrestor hook it actually does move up and down, which is pretty nice. And it has a little hole that it fits in. So that was a pretty cool feature as well as these open up here. Let me see if I can get it, which were the air brakes right there. And that does close, but they're pretty fragile. So I'll show you all real quick what it looks like with all the ordnance on. See if I can open the wings there a little easier. And that does look pretty good. You can actually see detail in the engine there. Not a lot, but it's there at least, which is pretty cool. Again, I'm very impressed with the paint job. That's probably the main thing, to be honest with you. And for a display, that's pretty important. So if I can fix this ordinance, I'll be pretty happy. Okay, so lastly, we have the pitot tube that goes into the nose cone here. And it just goes into that hole right there. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, and that actually went in a little too easy. Um, you can see there it's still wobble, so that's definitely gonna need some glue. So kind of a bummer because other than that, this model looks probably one of the best F-14s I've seen as far as the patina, the details, and all that kind of stuff, but um, just the quality control was just a little lacking, unfortunately. And then this antenna on the top, I did actually knock off, unfortunately, when I was putting the ordinance on, it did glue back on. I'm not gonna fault the manufacturer for that just because this stuff is fragile in general and I was a little careless on the other side, but it glued back on and looks pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the cockpit and then install the pilots here in a little bit, but the canopy just lifts up like this. I will say I did open this before and be careful because there's a little piston looking arm right there, hydraulic arm right there that does pop off of the top of the canopy. It's like a little clip, like a C-clip. So be careful when you're lifting it up because I had to use tweezers to pop it back on. But first look of the cockpit is really good. I'll turn a flashlight on here in a sec so I can show you more details. But you can actually see the ejection seat handles here for the pilot and the Rio, which I thought was pretty cool, as well as the pilot's names and the Rio's name on the actual canopy glass as well. Okay, so I did turn on the flashlight so y'all could see a little better. And on the right side, the right panel of the Rio and the pilot seat, you can actually see there are some switches over there, which is pretty good detail. You can even see the ejection seat handles here and here. And then the seats look pretty good as well. On the back, you can actually see the radar stick right there, which the Rio would use to control the radar as well as the lantern and targeting pod. And then right here is the radar screen that the Rio would use to lock on the target. So pretty cool that they included those details in there. And then on the front, you can see the pilot 
does have some screens as well, which one of his screens he could actually mimic the screen for the lantern pod. He couldn't control it or anything, but that was on there. And then there is also a joystick down there for the pilot. It's right there. Let me go to the other side here. Show you, see if you can see anything a little different. There is no throttle, unfortunately, but I mean, I am pretty impressed with what they did include given such a small model. 172 scale is pretty small, so especially for all these little details that they put in there. Okay, so I did just notice something different about these figures here. You can see this one has his arms crossed and this one has his arms resting on his legs. So I'm not sure which one is the pilot or the Rio. And if you look at the instructions here, it doesn't show anything either because both of these figures have their hands on their laps. So I got to figure out if one of them's smaller or which one fits better because it looks like it's going to be a pretty tight fit. All right, so just as I expected, that actually took a lot of effort. I had to use some tweezers to really kind of maneuver them down from this side down between the ejection seat handle without breaking it. And he ended up fitting pretty good. It may have been better to put this one up front just because he may be a little smaller, but I am pretty happy with it. I love the little details that they put into these models. I just don't like the quality control. That's the only thing. I mean, this is so close to being a 10 if this quality control issues weren't so bad. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to rate this one probably around like a six or a seven as far as quality control goes, maybe even a five. But as far as looks goes, this is definitely pretty high up there, maybe even a nine or a 10, just because I'm really impressed with the weathering with the little details that they did. And I even like how the canopy fits. It fits pretty good. I mean, it's pretty flush for the most part. It's just that I gotta figure out how to get off what looks like glue. If anybody knows, please put a message in the comments. It's definitely not scratching. That's some sort of a glue. And I don't know if like Gooby Gone will work or anything like that, but I don't wanna mess up the plastic. So let me know in the comments if you know how I can maybe try to get this stuff off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the gear in the down position. And you'll see this little hole there and a little circle there. That's where this is gonna go. And I will show you real quick, the wheel does spin pretty good. So I do like that they did that. And to put it in, you just push that slot like that and you will, looks like I'm gonna have to push back to fit it in the hole with some tweezers. There we go. And then that did fit in pretty good. And it does come with some gear doors to show the open position. This one's gonna go right there in that slot, and you can kind of see it down there. It'll fit. It might be kind of hard to do with the targeting pot on, but we're gonna try anyways. All right, there we go. So I'll probably push it down a little more later. And then the next part of the door is this section right here, and that's gonna go right there. So it's gonna probably be hard to do on camera. Okay, I did end up getting it on, and it does look pretty good, but again, it was really hard to push down. So I definitely recommend getting some tweezers. If you have some of these flat tweezers, they'll be even better because it'll allow you to push down. So for the front gear, you have this little tiny post there and then on the bottom of this, which are gonna line up with that hole there and that one there. And then you'll have the launch bar, which this is supposed to be the launch bar in the front. It does take a little bit of maneuvering to get that one in the back hole. Let's see, may have to do that off camera. There we go. Well, kind of, let me work on that. That's what it looks like installed. I was able to get it in by just pushing down in the back a little harder. I just think these pieces with the paint are a little too tight of a fit, but the front wheels also do move, which is pretty cool. And then you also have the launch bar here. And then we have the gear doors on the front right there, which do have some riding and I can't really see that very well, but we'll try to get a closer look once I install it. And they're gonna go in this slot here and in there. I'll probably have to use tweezers to get this into because it's just too hard to do one-handed. The front landing gear does look really good once it's installed. I did have to take off the gear itself to get these doors on properly, so I highly recommend doing that. And then as far as the writing and the text, it says, CMDCM AWSW Mark Hall, Louisville, Kentucky. And I think this may be like the maintenance tech. Somebody let me know in the comments if you know whose name that is and why it's there, but that would be my assumption. Anyways, overall, it looks good. It's fully assembled now, and I'll kind of go over the rest of the details of the F14, but I do want to show you what it looks like fully assembled with the wheels on. And I really do like the way it looks. I mean, I like the paint job, like I've said, and 
the detail patina, even the logo, like you can see here, the insignia looks really good. All the markings seem to be accurate. Beware of blast Navy VF 11. So really impressed with all that. Just the quality control, of the ordinance and some of the attachments is the only thing. But other than that, Oh, there we go. One of the gear doors just fell off. So, <laughs> all right. So the only thing left are these little gear doors that'll go in place of the actual landing gear. If you want to put them in the landing gear in the up position, and they would just go like this. I'll show you what that looks like once I install the stand here in a little bit. So there's that one for the front gear and then these will go for the rear gear. Okay, so now that everything's assembled, I'll show you around the aircraft a little more and show some of the details. If you zoom in here, you can see it says executive officer and commanding officer with the pilot in the Rio. You also see the rescue right there. And then there's something written right underneath here let me see if I can get closer. I can't get that much closer, so I don't know what that means. If somebody knows, let me know in the comments if that's accurate or not. And then moving along the wing sweep, you see USS John F. Kennedy. Well, <laughs> hold on, that's a mess up, guys. That's actually supposed to be John F. Kennedy. That says John F. Finity. <laughs> that's actually really funny. So the carrier name was actually John F. Kennedy, not John F. Finity. So, and then the wing sweeps, I like that they open up and they move together, but they have this metal clanking sound. Sounds like metal on metal, so kind of cheap, if I'm honest with you, but at the same time, you're gonna be probably leaning them out or putting them in anyway, so. And then towards the rear, you have the stabilizers. They do move independent, but they're not very, like they don't wanna hold their position. They're pretty loose, and they are metal. Same thing with the other side. This one's a little more stiff, but they just don't really feel that good. And then the rudders actually do move as well the vertical stabilizers like that, but they're really loose. And then you also have right here, the speed brakes or the air brakes. And unfortunately they're really hard to get open. I tried to get open. So you have to use, I had to use my tweezers to pop them out a little bit, but you have it on the top. And then also underneath you have these two right here, which you can kind of pry down. So it looks like that. So, I mean, it's a really cool feature. If you want to show it coming in, maybe for a landing, you could do that. And then I already showed you the engines. There's not a whole lot of detail in there. Can't get a lot of light in there anyways, but pretty much what I've already showed you, nothing really different, no step there, all those little no step signs. And USS John Affinity, <laughs> same thing on this side. So I would say overall, I do like this model. Unfortunately, there are some things that just bother me, like the quality, of the ordinance and you know obviously the John F. Finity and the sound of the metal on metal for the wing sweeps. But other than that, I really do think this makes a really good display. If you're somebody that just wants to set it up, leave it, which most people will do anyways, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and install the stand and this would be if you wanna have the F-14 in the flight position. Go ahead and take it out. Looks like it does come with some instructions. It's pretty simple. Looks like you have a screw to screw this little adapter to the neck, into the base, and then you actually install the base to the rear of the engine. So that's pretty cool. Just pop this little cover off. Okay, good. So at least it's metal because the model's pretty heavy. So you have a metal neck and also a metal base, which is nice. And then here are the adapters. I'll go ahead and get these out. So these are plastic, these little adapters here. And then you have three screws. Looks like one for the base and then probably two for the adapters. Actually, just two screws. One for the base, one for the adapter, and then this little plate right here. All right, guys, I'm a little disappointed again with the quality control. So with the base itself, it actually came with two screws, one little black screw right here, which is a standard, looks like metric. And then you had this little silver screw right here. And it doesn't say in the instructions which screw is supposed to go where. They're the exact same looking screw. 
right? So it looks like the bigger screw is supposed to go through the bottom. So when I tried to screw it in, it literally snapped off in the bottom. And then the top doesn't even have threads. So this little black one, I don't even know how it's supposed to go in there. So a little disappointed. I'm not sure I'm even gonna be able to show you guys a stand, unfortunately. I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe glue it or something and then show you guys back. But I don't know that I can recommend this stand, unfortunately. So I did end up getting the top section on. You just have these couple of adapters. And then what I do like about the top is that it actually swivels left and right. So you can put the plane on the stand and have it at an angle. But I ended up having to grind off this bottom screw here. I could not get it out. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna super glue it to the bottom here and see how it holds. I can do a little more of a permanent, maybe JB Weld type metal to metal if I like that, but just a little disappointed. Quality control unfortunately is lacking with this company. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install these pieces at the gear in the up position. And honestly, I'm a little nervous just based on the quality of everything and the fit that I'm not gonna be able to get them back out. So I'm probably not gonna push them in all the way, but that just, doesn't look right either. I mean, it's like not even weathered the same as the plane. So you won't see it obviously because it'll be underneath, but even right here where the gear is, where the gear door is, you can't even replace this piece. They didn't include a piece that goes right here. So you'll probably just leave that. And then on the other side, you just push it in. So now I'll show you what it looks like with a stand. So you don't actually install it through the engines like it looks like in the picture. You take these little hooks right here and they're gonna go right here and here. And you have to be careful because underneath, if you have the air brakes out a little bit, it can snag. So what I realize, I'm gonna do it like this, kind of back and up, and then wiggle it in like that. Also be careful of the arrestor hook as well. Make sure that's in the up position. So now that that's on there, I'm, I like the way it looks while it's on the stand. And let me bring it here and show you. So one thing you can do that I do like about this model and the stand is that you can angle it like that. So it's something you can't do on any of the Hobby Master models that I'm aware of, but you can actually tilt it either direction. It doesn't want to go that way as much for some reason, but you can definitely tilt it like that. So it looks like it's in like a fighter stance doing a turn. So that's pretty cool. If, if you want to leave it on the stand and you want to risk it, <laughs> I can't recommend the stand, honestly, just because of my experience, but the super glue looks like it is holding okay. And it does look good once it's on the stand. And I do like that it has that angle. So if you wanna get it, there you go. But at least you know the faults. Overall, again, I can't really say I recommend this plane, but personally, with the landing gear and the down position on the carrier deck, I'm really happy with that if you can get past all the issues. So thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and like this video, it really does help out. I have a lot more reviews coming soon, so stay tuned.